Howdy folks, Spencer here, and today I want to go over the latest batch of news for STO on both PC and console. As always, chapters to each topic are listed down below. First up, console has a 20% ship sale running right now up through August 5th at 12 p.m. Pacific time. So this is 20% off on the individual ships in the Zen store, which is a pretty good sale to take advantage of if there's any individual ships you've been looking to pick up. It also is 20% off on ship and dry dock slots, which is close enough to their best discounted price. And for the other part of the sale here, you've got 20% off on bundles, which is something that I would steer clear of. If you're going after bundles, wait for a proper 35% bundle sale. And for the upgrade tokens and fleet ship modules, those are also 20% off. For the upgrade tokens, uh, the T6X experimentals, as I've talked about many times in the past, you can get those at a fraction of the price through the Phoenix events. The Phoenix versions, however, are bound to you, whereas the ones directly from the Zen store are not. But I think if you're going for these upgrades and you're looking to put money in for them, you're probably wanting to use them. So the, the Phoenix route is what I would recommend. And for the fleet ship modules, those are just typically cheaper to get through the player exchange, pick up some keys, sell the keys on the market, and use the EC from that. And typically you can get a bit more of the fleet modules for your money. So that's my recommendations for this sale. And that is it for the console news. So let's head on over to PC. And as many of you know, the Heritage Bundle dropped on PC last week. And if you've been playing the game at all in the time since on PC, you have seen the ships from that bundle in pretty much every map you've been in. Well, the bundle is so popular, according to Thomas, within its first week on just PC, remember, it's not even on console yet, it is already in the top five best performing bundles for Star Trek Online all time. So what this means is that they have just figured out something new that they can uh, focus on to get some more engagement, get some more money, and I think we're very likely going to see them do like a Heritage 2 bundle sometime in the future. I don't think it'll happen this year. They've already got their plans figured out for this year. But I think this has definitely shifted some plans around for, for future years. And I would not be surprised at all to see a Heritage 2 bundle drop around the same time in 2025. So my question to all of you is what three ships would you guys like to see in a Heritage 2 bundle? Let me know down below. And heading over to the PC patch notes, we have a bunch of fixes here for the Heritage bundle. So the first thing here is they resolved an issue with the Typhon in which it had too many tactical bridge officer seats like I talked about in the video last week. It had a lieutenant commander, which was supposed to be a lieutenant. So that has been fixed, though there is still an issue that has been reported on Reddit and the forums where if you had saved a loadout prior to this patch and you load that loadout, you can get that lieutenant commander seat back. So if you're dealing with that, then enjoy it while it lasts. But that workaround will probably be uh, taken away from you here soon. They added an additional universal console slot to the Achilles to match other American worker ships. So you can now do five isomags on the Achilles. They resolved an issue with the premonition in which you could not run dual cannons or dual heavies. So that's good. They resolved an issue with the prototype phaser hexa cannons that caused it to act like a torpedo. So the performance of these has not been impacted at all. They still perform just as well as they did before the patch. The issue was that for, for some reason, it looks like there was an auto fire setting configured wrong for them where your fire energy weapons wasn't always making them fire. Um, but if you had fire all weapons or fire torpedoes, that would work for them. So this makes it so that they'll fire with your energy weapons. So just a nice little fix there to make sure that they're actually firing. They have it now so that when you purchase the Typhon, you unlock the ability to get the Valkyrie Squadron fighters. They resolved an issue preventing the Typhon from using Type 7A hull material. Um, they resolved an issue with certain windows and lights on the premonition appearing to flicker. Um, but from what I think I saw on Twitter, there, there may still be some slight issues there, but they're aware of it and working on it. And they resolved an issue causing the glow of the starboard to solve the premonition to be too small when going to work. So all around some, some good fixes here and known issues. The Achilles does not have access to the quantum slipstream drive, but like you would see on other American worker ships. So that will be fixed. So 
overall good fix good to see many of these issues quickly resolved and looking forward to, to trying out the premonition now with a proper uh dual heavy cannon setup and for those of us on pc there's some new items in the muds market which i'll go over here in a moment and alongside those we have a 75 percent sale on all of the non-bundle items in the mud store from now up through august 5th at noon pacific time so if there's any of the items you've been looking at any of the standalone ships then this sale is as good as we see nowadays and if you're curious about what items in here are worth taking a look at i do have a stream that went through all of these items one by one which i'll have linked down below and for this muds market update we have three new items two of them are kit modules and one is an event ship the event ship is the Fekiri Burjai Interceptor. This is from a winter event about two or so years back. And then we have the V'ger Probes kit module and the Sompek Energy Rebounder kit module. So let's take a look at both of these kit modules first. The Sompek one isn't anything too special from what I can remember. You're basically placing down these two devices and it'll deal some plasma damage in between them. They're, they're not really that amazing. But the, the V'ger probes, they are pretty nice on ground. They're, they're not as powerful as the, the ball lightning, but they are pretty, pretty good to have on hand, especially if you're looking for something account-wide and you don't want to spend a little enough favors to get ball lightning on every character. So let's take a look at both these kit modules. I'm gonna send my bridge officers away. Let's take a look at the Sompek one first. I'm going to set this down. And you can see it just has that effect like you would see in a Somp pack where anything that walks into that is going to take some damage. It's not a ton of damage, but if you place it right, you know, you might might be able to benefit from it in some niche scenarios. Now for the V'ger probes, these are going to have a bit more of a punch. Again, they're not as powerful as Ball Lightning, but, you know, if you're looking for something account-wide and you're wanting to drop 20 bucks on it, then, then there you go. But sometimes they don't move around right, like right now, they're, they're not hitting this target, but you can see what they do there. And with both of these, I believe they also come in a package where there's a uh, an ultimate tech upgrade with them. So, I mean, for 20 bucks, you're getting the kit module on account wide unlock plus an ultimate tech upgrade. Uh, whether that's worth it or not, I that, that's up to you. Um, but between the two, I, I wouldn't buy the, the Sompek one, but the V'ger probes, between the two, that is the, the better kit module. But if you don't want to spend money on it, you can certainly play perfectly fine without it. And for the ship here, we have the Fekiri Burjai Interceptor. This has a hold mod of 0 0.9, shield mod of 1, turn rate 20, impulse mod 0.22, inertia rating of 80, pretty high. Uh, bonus power of plus 10 to weapons and ox. It's got a 5-2 weapon setup with an experimental weapon. Two device slots, console-wise, 4 attack, 2 inch, 5 psi. So this is the, this ship, as you'll see when I get into the bridge officer setup, is more of a do psi platform. You can use it perfectly fine just for, for pure do, um, but this is very much a do psi ship, and it's not bad. It's just not necessarily going to be the, the best platform ever for that play style. You may prefer something like the, the Chekhov, which has a secondary deflector, if that's what you're looking to do. Um, this is a solid ship, though. It doesn't have a full spec at all because it was an event ship a couple years ago. So you're looking at a commander TAC, lieutenant TAC with intel, ensign engineer, lieutenant commander science, and a lieutenant commander universal with temporal operative. So the temp op intel combo on this is good. Again, it's a decent side or do side platform. Um, but aside from that, there's not many other play styles that would benefit from the ship directly. Accessory wise, the trait here is tear open the gates, bridge officer anomalies, so things like Gravwell will spawn lost souls that last for 30 seconds and deal physical damage, which ignores shields to a random nearby foe for up to twice per second, and you can have up to 12 souls out at a time. This trait, from what I recall, wasn't a very great performer, um, but it was, you know, just something that might visually be fun for you if you're doing a full Fekiri theme build. 
And for the other accessories, you have the experiment weapon, the Ravager Shriek. Now, when I tested this thing uh, about a year or so back, it was a pretty good performer in AOE heavy environments, but we do have better options now. The Pexa cannons off the Achilles that we got last week, those are a far better experimental weapon. So with the Ravager Shriek, you know, may still have its use cases on some niche builds, but there have been much better experimental weapons that have dropped in the time since. So I wouldn't go out and pick the ship up just for that experimental weapon nowadays. And for the console, this is Portal of the Damned. From what I understand, there are some EPG builds that some people do like to run this console on. I haven't really played with it too much myself, but um, what this thing does is it has passives for plus 28.5 armor pen with weapons versus foes affected by a dot and plus 28.5 to EPG skill. The clicky on this is going to open a portal for 30 seconds that spawns lost souls and deals fire damage. So it will deal fire damage to everything within a five kilometer radius and each second it will apply an accuracy debuff and do some more fire damage to foes within two and a half kilometers. And each second it will create a lost soul that lasts for 30 seconds and deals physical damage to a random nearby foe up to twice per second. You can have up to 12 souls out at a time. So this console again, from what I understand, is popular on some EPG builds. Again, it's not something I've messed around too much my with too much myself, but I'll show you both of the consoles here quick. I am on a character with uh, pretty much nothing, so just keep that in mind. But you can at least see the visuals. Here is the experimental weapon. It's good because it hits multiple targets. It does more when you've, of course, upgraded it. I'll fire it again. And here is the console. So again, I am on a character that has absolutely nothing on it, but if you're on an EPG heavy build, you could get a little bit more out of that. So if you're looking to do a theme build, you know, again, with this Fekiri stuff, if you're looking for, you know, another fun EPG console to mess around with on account wide unlock, then the Burge I may be of interest to you. The, the ship itself isn't bad. It, it is a very capable platform, again, for pure do or for a do size setup. But there are other options out there nowadays that are going to be, you know, just 30 bucks in the C store. Like the, the Chekhov would be a better do side platform for pure do. The, the Hydra is really good. The Achilles that just dropped is also a very good platform. Like the, there's quite a few different options out there nowadays. If you want to spend 40 bucks on this, it's there for you. But I, I think, again, this is another ship that most of you can very much live without. And over on the Builds Discord, we have a T6 coupon up for grabs for PC players, courtesy of Martin. So all you have to do to enter is go to the Giveaways channel over in the Builds Discord, which is linked down below, and hit this blue party icon right below the giveaway post. That's all you have to do to enter, and that drawing will end on August 4th at 5.09 p.m. Central Time. And that's going to be it for today. As always, thank you to all channel members and viewers for the continued support. See you guys around.